The Euphrates River is one of the most well-known rivers in Asia. It is home to many species of plants and animals, and millions of people depend on its water to live. However, scientists have recently made a terrible discovery about the river. This video will show what scientists have found in the Euphrates River that has shocked them. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to see more great videos. The Euphrates, along with its twin Tigris, is one of the longest rivers in the world, the area known historically as Mesopotamia, or land between two rivers, is surrounded and flowed by these rivers. The Babylonians, Sumerians, and Akkadians are a few well-known ancient civilizations that lived there. Modern times, these rivers start in the Taurus Mountains in southeast Turkey. Tons of alpine snow melts into the river before it empties into the Persian Gulf. The rivers flow from their source through the Syrian and Iraqi plains. Rainfall in rivers that flow into lakes is another source of water for the rivers. The river basin is in different climate zones, including the Mediterranean and a hot, dry climate. The upper part of the basin gets enough rain and snowfall. The Euphrates is one of the places where people have lived the longest. It is also one of the rivers mentioned in the Bible. Archaeologists have found evidence of ancient droughts, floods, and desalinization in the changes in the water channels. The land is quickly running out of resources again and areas that used to be home to people and animals are now turning into deserts. Syria and Iraq, Turkey is still the main supplier, even though the river has been used for many different things. Even now, water from the Euphrates River is used for irrigation, crop growth, industry, and recreation. The three governments along the river agreed on how to use it properly because it was important. This shows how important the river is to the welfare of all the countries it flows through Syria. In 1960s, Turkey and Iraq started to think about how to control their water resources. They used their rivers more often, so they had to build current water development projects on the Euphrates River. When the project started, most of the work focused on preventing river flooding. As each country changed and people's water needs grew, the focus shifted to hydropower and drinking water projects. This bad drought hasn't happened in Iraq long, and it is bad news for farmers. However, archaeologists in the country will benefit from it. Because the Euphrates River's water level is dropping, archaeologists have found several unknown ancient sites before the drought. Rib Ali al Kubaisi is the head of Amber's provincial department for antiquities. He thinks that civilization began on the Euphrates River in Amber. In the middle of the 1980s, Saddam Hussein's government dammed the Euphrates River, flooding a 120-mile stretch of land near Iraq's border with Syria. The government said that since the summer, a large reservoir that used to stretch as far as the eye could see has shrunk by almost 90%. The team says 75 archaeological sites were mostly dug up before the area flooded. They covered people's history from 3000 BC to the Sumerian and Roman times. Ancient Jewish towns were also washed away there, but Radig could find new places as the seas receded. For example, he found a cliff with pre-Christian graves carved into it for the first time, even though the water had damaged them a lot. Radig thinks they are still important, and he wants to return to these archaeological sites. If they had the money and resources, they could have finished the work he and his team started all those years ago. Radib says that he thinks it is a Roman irrigation channel. He says he has never been to this place before. He says that when they dug up the area decades ago, it was covered in a lot of dirt, but the receding rivers revealed everything. They are shocked to find this out, but their excitement is quickly replaced by worry. Radib says he is worried about a theft in this area because only 10 guards keep Anbar's important ancient sites safe. There are many different things to do in the area while fishermen who depend on the Euphrates for their livelihood have suffered greatly from the droughts, archaeologists have benefited. Neji Said says that the river is only three or four feet deep. He says that strange structures are coming up out of the water. He points to a stone bridge in decay that is lapped by murky waters. He says that archaeologists found more than that when they explored the area after the floods subsided about a year ago. He says that most of the looting is still being done by locals who don't know what they've taken. When he goes back to the country, 
Radev says he will ask the central government in Baghdad for money. He says that they will start working immediately to start new digs and protect the site if they have the money. He also asks that the whole area be reskinned, but he knows there will probably need more money. He complains that they won't be able to dig, but at least they will be able to report what they find. Archaeologists also found the Mitanni Empire. A team of German and Kurdish archaeologists found a 3,400-year-old Mitanni city that used to be on the Tigris River. The town was once part of the Mitanni Empire. Because of the terrible flood in Iraq at the beginning of this year, a huge city with palaces and other important buildings may have existed in ancient Sakiku, which is thought to have been near Mosul. Iraq is one of the countries affected by climate change, especially in the south, which has been in a severe drought for months. Since December, much water has been drained from the Musa Reserve, Iraq's largest water storage facility, to keep crops from drying out the Bronze Age city, which had been underwater for decades. The site is in Kamu, Iraqi Kurdistan, and archaeologists have never looked there. German archaeologist, June Professor Dr. Ivana Polges, Professor Dr. Peter Falsner, and Kurdish archaeologist Hassan Ahmad Kazem, chairman of the Kurdish Archaeology Association, decided on the spot to do collaborative rescue excavations of Kamen. They were under pressure to find and document at least a part of this large and important metropolis as soon as possible because it is now underwater. They had already put together an excavation team. It's exciting that five ceramic containers with more than 100 old tablets were found. They were built in the Assyrian Middle Ages, not long after a terrible earthquake destroyed the city. There are still some cuneiform tablets and clay envelopes that have held letters. The find could answer important questions about the change from the metropolis to the Mitannian period to Syrian control of the area. This would help protect the important site from further damage from rising water. As part of a large effort funded by the Goethe Henkel Foundation, the excavations were covered with tight-fitting plastic sheets and topped with gravel fill. This was done to protect any possible hidden treasures and unbaked clay walls from water damage. However, water has again covered this area, so archaeologists can dig there again. So folks, that's all we have for this video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe.